Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Soundweb Studios. Visit online at soundwebstudios.com for all your needs. And brought to you by our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international warring author Mia Moses, The Missing, available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. We're here with an amazing gentleman who's a traditional singer, songwriter, performer from the Bay Area with a variety of uh, mixes genres, going through the evolution of uh, modern pop music and also um, has a wide variety in the golden age of uh, music as well. He'll take you on a journey. He began his career writing songs, collaborating with uh, Lindsey Buckingham and Stevie Nicks at Fleetwood Mac. He was scouted by ABC Records and continued his work after that and um, also um, to uh, to um, to new crowds as everything else. And uh, he also um, has a couple of releases, uh, River of Life and The Winds of Fortune running close together. And also we'll be featuring one of his singles to talk about as well, too. And he's been the music business for quite some time, not just for the money aspect, but for the pure love of it. Why the pure love of it? We'll find out just one minute. Live, ladies and gentlemen, from Plus Studios in the beautiful downtown Bay Area, the multi-talented traditional singer, songwriter, and performer, the very multi-talented David Harley. David, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you for having me. I'm very, very uh, pleased to uh, have you in my office room in my house here, <laughs> <laughs> where I do my day job, as we were ch chatting a little bit, and then my my studio is just down the hall, <laughs> right? So uh, it, it, it's almost like you got a big facility right here. This is like my little um studio right here. It's, yeah, it's a yeah. home. It's also a place to sleep, place to eat, and of course a place to uh to grab some coffee, get some water, get something to drink. It's like you know, it's all in a nice little area. It's like I think we're getting in an age where it's like you're kind of buying home, yeah. office, luxury, all in a nice little space. It's kind of making a comeback here. So. Yeah. <laughs> so. It's good. We, you know, ever since, like he, we were saying, that ever since COVID happened, that it kind of like, uh, you know, it's like that story of the bear, bear rabbit. Don't please don't throw me in the in the in the thorn bushes or something. You know, don't throw me. Don't. It turned out that it was done a lot. Actually, did did a lot of good too. Just kind of breaking everything up and restarting from kind of more where life should be at, which is some kind of uh, balance, more balance of of your life being intersecting with your job a little mm -hmm. bit better, you know. And that's really amazing too. We'll talk about that. So you're a traditional singer, songwriter, performer from the Bay Area with a variety and a wide mix of genres uh, going through the evolution of modern pop music into uh, today's world and to begin a career writing songs, collaborating with Lindsey Buckingham and Stevie Nicks of Fleetwood Mac. And uh, you were scouted by ABC Records and you continue your work as well too. And you talk about your day job and you intertwine your career with um, the things you've done and also with um, music as well too. And uh, you also have a couple of releases, uh, River of Life and Winds of Fortune. And um, the feature song we'll be talking about is... Um, Lights of the Bay, and before getting to all that, David, tell us how you first got started. Okay, sure. I, well, it, when I grew up, it was actually the folk music scene that was really happening. That was the first thing. And my, I had a brother-in-law that taught me how to how to get started. He was a great banjo player, and we were all really into the folk music. And then, eventually, you know, that's that's where I started, and then. Right from there, uh, you start playing with your friends and just go like around and around in a circle, sitting in the room, uh, learning how to play. It's the traditional way that I think musicians f throughout time have learned how to play music. And um, so, I mean, eventually I went to school for to college for about a year or so, and I did take a recording class, uh, San Francisco State, and and. But mostly, um, as you, as time goes on and you start recording and be able being able to record yourself these days, that's been the huge advantage because at one point, you know, it, it for a long time it was it was too expensive to to record for the most part uh, mm -hmm. in the studio very much, you know. But now you can really take your time and kind of work things through, and because. Because of the kind of music I do, which is is traditional music, very um, um, structured in, in a lot of ways uh, toward the old old school type of music, which it, which is kind of making a comeback. People are starting to respect it a little bit more, I suppose, and it'll never go away. Uh, mm -hmm. And you know, like talking to our mutual friend Carla, you know, things come and go. 
but they always come back sometimes some of these things and so it's it's a traditional type of music which involves a lot of singing a lot of harmony a lot of melody in the song structure i would say as much as anything i learned how to write music from going through the beatles songbooks and just absorbing how, how they would structure songs and put chords together in unusual ways and and you know you, basically what it is as a musician and any kind of art you're just absorbing things all the time you don't even know you are a lot of time and you're changing without even trying to it's just kind of synthesizing and percolating inside of you all these influences and that's why um i feel like you know my music's kind of interesting in that i'm not stuck in any one genre i kind of move around a lot and i think that might be hopefully refreshing to the uh listeners too uh so that they don't get old kind of in the same old sound every time <clears throat> so it's and, and it makes it just a lot more fun. And if something is more fun to you, it's, there's a chance that it's going to be more fun to other people, too. It almost sounds like it's going back to Daisy the Americana music as well, too. That's, That's right. been making a major comeback, Americana. Yeah, yeah. And there, there's a lot of that. I have a lot of those types of songs. And <clears throat> as time goes on, uh, we're, we're really working now uh, to get some of these songs out there. Uh, because, you know, I did kind of have to take a, a, a uh, let's say, a side route in my life to, in order to focus on trying to make a living more than I would have liked. Uh, I would have rather just stayed in the music full time, but that is so difficult to do um, and make a living. And so I've kind of tried to work it into my working life. But now as I'm getting older, I'm just focusing more and more on the music. Um but to answer your question, getting back to how did the music start? Well, it started from just a communal kind of thing. Uh, one person at the high school I was going to said, oh, I know this really good group. I, she was a big fan of mine. I know this really good group. And where we grew up, right near um, Silicon Valley, um, uh, were uh, Lindsay and Stevie and their group, Fritz was the name of the group. And um, I so I met with them and then we just started playing together and I would just go over to Lindsay's house and we would record. Um, and then eventually they started doing some of my songs. And when they played at the Fillmore um, the, for the first time, they did one of my songs. <laughs> and, so, and it was really exciting to hear it, their version of it and everything. And and so. You know, it was just great. And at that point, they were already just on their way getting a call. I remember uh, Lindsay was saying, well, I got a call from, um, um, uh, let's see, who, who's the name of the group? I forget right now. Oh, it was Fle a Fle famous group. Fle Fleetwood, Fleetwood Mac. Yeah, we mentioned Fleetwood Mac. And I think that was where he was about to replace Peter Green. It was like a, a transition yeah. going from Peter Green with the traditional yeah. blues going to the sound we experience today. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so they were already getting some very, you know, get in, in real industry interest at that time. And um, well, soon after that, then I was playing in my group and uh, we, I, we met this person from Motown Records, who's a great engineer who came out to the Bay Area named Bob Olson, um, who's a pretty famous guy because he did so much good work over at uh, over at Motown. Well, he took a liking to us. He set us up with a manager and the manager set us up with ABC Records. And we had the president of, of I think, the North America living right near where I live now. And they took uh, on our group as a group that they really wanted to, to bring on board. Well, what happened is we we put it together, the, the group together, worked, worked it up and got for a live performance. We were recording it uh, so that they could then take it in with that demo. Then they were going to provide for us a new demo, uh, a demo budget. And that's the way they used to do it in those days. Mm. And it was a pretty good sum of money. They were going to take us into the studio. Well, what happened at that time was MCA Records bought out ABC right at that time right as soon as we did our gig we had our tape we went down to la and that week <laughs> MCA, oh no MCA bought, bought out abc and abc had like steely dan they had tom petty it was a good label i would have loved to got on it but it didn't work mm -hmm. 
Oh my gosh, that was something too. So, um, okay, Dave, I think we um, just kind of cut out a little bit. So are we still with us, David? Or David, are we still with us here? Okay. All right. So, and we're talking about with uh, David Hurley here on the Mike Wagner Show. And um, also, I think we cut out for just a minute. So, David, I think we talked about um, ABC and everything else. And I think um, we, we were... Um, you know, just on Zoom here. So I think it was ABC and then things kind of just progress afterwards. But then you also continue work and also stay in the music business as well. Yeah. Well, then what happened from there on, uh, your internet connection is unstable. It says, I'm sorry about that. Well, anyway, we'll continue. Um, it's, it's okay. We're professionals. We know how to run this here. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we're good because uh, you know how technology encroaches on us when we're, oh, talking, yeah. when we're in trying to talk. Sometimes it interrupts us. Um, but yeah, what, what, what went on from there was uh, just a constant over slow flow of songs over the years that just kept coming from the experiences I was having and from my just wanting to put it into music. Um, so uh, basically what happened is I was able to play with some really great musicians. We made some good demos along the way, but I really wasn't focused on it, unfortunately, for that time, as far as trying to put in the time, energy, and, and money to, to make it happen. But now what's happened in the last, say, 10 years is, is that I've gotten to the point where I've accumulated so many songs and had a little more money and a little more time to work with. So I went back to doing it. And right at that time, that's when the whole recording session studio, home recording studio technology just really took off. And you were able now to create things that you could never create uh, live unless you had just the right musicians and, and, and so on. So it was it was a renaissance for me. As a musician, I have this huge backlog, which I'm still tapping to this day. <laughs> and every time I do, it's a new adventure. A new song is a new journey. It's like a new a movie. You're creating something, and it's unfolding in front of you as you're going along. And it's so intriguing. You know, it's like, Okay, now what's going to happen next? Now, if I add this part here, what? How would that change thing? And I, I'm doing. I just did that today. I was working on a song, and I said, I think it needs to be in just a little bit higher key, and also the tempo, so I could just change those two things immediately, just like you would do if you were playing with some really good band, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, what bands do? They sit there and they they play around with it and get work it to to get it to sound just just the way it should sound. Because every song in it has sort of a formula of what works best for that song. It sounds best at a certain tempo. It sounds best at a certain key, and it has a or a certain feel. And then the, you get in, you can get into uh, you know so many things with music. And that's the thing about it. It it so I'm I'm at the point now uh, where I'm really enjoying this stage of my life at, at with music. And it's, you know, it's making it such that, um, you know, I'm really motivated to continue uh, getting it out there. And that's it. Luckily, I've been able to do that. Uh, uh, and the last year I had had some, you know, funding to work with and was able to get some promotion going uh, where we put together uh, some of the, the promotion for the Lights of the Bay, uh, the single that I released. And also, get, just backing up a bit, you mentioned the two albums. Yes, Lights of the, La, the River of Life, um, and, um, um, and 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 the other one, the the uh, Winds of Fortune, were the two releases that I've done in the last just few years. And and the River of Life came out in March of 2020, uh, which is, of course. The worst time in probably in history almost that you could have re <laughs> released an album. <laughs> Couldn't have picked the worst time, but that's when it came out. And I kind of had to sit on it for a while and couldn't get out and promote it. And you know, at that point, it would have been best to uh, promote it and get get a band going behind it. But that was not possible at that time. But now uh, this time with the Winds of Fortune, I had some great great luck with that. Getting getting some interest here. Uh, from from the industry more, um, but the one that really took off was Lights of the Bay from the first from Winds of Fortune from from the River of Life album, 
and we're we're up to almost a hundred uh, k v- uh, views on uh, on YouTube now on that. Mm-hmm. So we're getting some real interest, and uh, that's enabled me to also get a sync uh, in publishing contract uh, contract from a very good reputable company that has. Um, you know, they place uh, the music in the uh, television and movies uh, in advertising and and, and, in, and in movies too. Mm. And so it's that that kind of a company that does that. But they also this company also has a really good in with the hot some of the best uh, performing uh, country uh, musicians these days too. So I'm very hopeful about that. That's a new a new relationship I'm just starting, and we mm. have some interest from a good, a really interesting. Um, uh, in independent label contract uh, potential coming up too uh, yeah, from you, the company here. You also mentioned as well too having your songs and music uh, being in soundtracks, commercials, and everything else that yeah. has really taken off to an astronomical level. And you know, a long time ago that was not even considered. It was just like you know, sidebar getting pennies. Now it's becoming much more lucrative than ever. Now right. it's like let's say with Lights of the Bay, they took some bits and pieces of it. It could be on Netflix. It could be on Paramount Plus, or it could be even on, say, you know, Disney Plus for all all means. Everything. It's like you know, Hulu, anything like that. It's like you know, on any mm-hmm. streaming service. It's like you know, they recognize it, and all of a sudden the sales will go up. That's been a big thing these days. It seems that's where the most lucrative part of the business is now. You know, mm-hmm. and that's just it's a great thing where basically. You can work from home. You can put something together. You can give it to them. They can get it to somebody else. And, you know, there's this whole infrastructure system set up for this stuff, for the music to flow. And it has its own uh, its own rhythm and its own business. That's for sure. Very sophisticated, nuanced business of getting that kind of stuff out there. Um, but it's, you know, between that and live performance, I think that's where people make uh, sort of most of their money these days, even because streaming isn't, you know, as everybody knows, it isn't quite so lucrative. It is, you know, um, but um, yeah, so I'm going to continue doing that, uh, working with some of the sync placement uh, agencies. Um, and now the next thing is really to put together a live performing group. Uh, and that's the next, you know, goal for, for the coming year. And then of course, I'm already working on the next album too. And certainly amazing too. We'll talk about your upcoming meow. We'll talk more about lights of the Bay and uh, river of life and winds of fortune with David Harley. But first to listen to the Mike Wagner show at the Mike Wagner show.com powered by sock web studios. Visit online at SonicWebStudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at SonicWebStudios.com. Mention Mike Wagner show get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give an official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, International War Ring author Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you love Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. Takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is illusion and those you love will be the first to go missing. It's available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Zia's current great reviews. And Eve 11 endorsed by Howard's celebrities, including Joanna Cassie, Forge Riley, and Manales. So grab your copy today for it goes missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show at the themikewidenershow.com on over 40 podcast platforms. Heard in over 100 countries, including Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also, Anchor FM, iTunes, Apple Music, YouTube, BitChute, Rumble, and more. Also, Mike Widener Show can be heard on HamiltonRadio.net every Thursday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central, and a few networks coming soon. Take us with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Follow the Mike Wagner Show on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok today. And for great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com. Check out the Mike Wagner Show podcast. T-shirts, pop sockets, throw pillows, tote bags, hoodies. Makes great gifts 24-7. Go to Amazon.com. Check out the Mike Wagner Show podcast. And for more great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com slash Mia Muslim DF for great books like Missing, Once, and Wrinkles. Also T-shirts, pop sockets, hoodies, phone cases, and more. Amazon.com slash Mia Muslim Check it out today. I'll support the Mike Wagner Show on Anchor FM. 
PayPal and the MikeWidenerShow.com. Make sure you do so today. We're here with the multi-talented traditional singer, songwriter, and performer from the Bay Area, David Harley, here on the Mike Widener Show. And uh, before we talk about your upcoming album, um, Lights of the Bay, your feature release, uh, you did River of Life and um, Winds of Fortune. And um, tell us more about uh, River of Life you talked about, and especially when it just, you know, <laughs> in Verley came out in the pandemic of 2020. And, um, you know, tell us a bit more about it. Also, some of the songs like Far Off Places, Rising Sun, Better Life, Tile Track of More, Meme. You know, tell us more about the album and um, what was the actual inspiration to um, write as well. So you want to talk about some of the songs? That's fine, too. Sure. Okay. Well, the, the thing about, about that is it's my first album where I really got serious about putting it together uh, on a level that I knew the songs could be released. And, I mean, I had done an album by myself in the 90s and 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 but this was this was different and like I said I kind of came out of of hibernation with not you know focusing all the time on the music business into really starting to focus on it and this was the result of of that of recording for a few years of bringing up old songs and writing some new songs along the way and every song is interesting that it always every song has a story to it of where it came from and it's a big genesis of, of how this happened came about and it, it usually always has something to do with some profound experience in your life like a better life was written about my mom who unfortunately passed away who i was very close to and it was a, a song like that uh, actually there's another one on there from my older brother that is the river of life uh, that i wrote about him uh, who also passed away. Um, Rising Sun was a, so a song that I wrote when I was really young, and it's Sun, S-O-N, and it has some very kind of spiritual connotations to it, and it's a classical kind of song. Uh, with I was living in a church at the time mm -hmm. uh, as the caretaker <laughs> of the church, and they had a big pipe organ, and this song kind of came out of that living there and being able to play that instrument i think was the way i wrote it and also um break of morning was was written at that place at that church and now it showed up years later on this album um but lights of the bay was really a nice a nice one i mean i always knew that it was had something special about it um and it was written when i was living in san francisco and working there in the financial district and i would take the I would take the cross town, you know, bus buses every morning to get to work. And it was, everything was just rush, rush, commute, uh, going, coming and going to work. And well, that all made its way into the song. And that's what the song is about is, uh, you know, another day of work and I just got to get away. Um, and it was about this workaday life that people have, but on the weekends when they when they can live the way they want to live, then they can cut loose and the rhythm of the music will set us free and dance all night by the lights of the bay. And so that that's the chorus. And um, I, you know, the thing also about uh, this album in general was that I used some very cool studio musicians. Uh, called Studio Pros um, out of LA. Um, and the person I was working with is an old musician friend of mine. He's a very good producer too. And he was starting his vinyl company of pressing vinyl records, was so busy doing that. He said, I can't can't keep doing doing this fast enough because I was ready to go. I was just you know, <laughs> putting the songs out. Okay. Okay. All right, looks like we're having a little technical difficulty with Zoom here, here on the Mike Wagner Show. We're here with um, David Harley on the um, program with Winds of Fortune and also River of Life as well, too. And um, we're just talking about some of the music business and everything else um, here on the program. I'd like to everybody, remind everybody, listen to the Mike Wagner Show at the themikewagnershow.com. It's powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com. And it looks like, David, I think we're back on as well, too. We're and back um, okay. Yeah, we're back on. We'll talk about... Um, you know, with studio musicians, uh, vinyl, and everything else. So we'll just kind of yeah. like, you know, like that. And we're going to try to get these bugs out of the system, too. That's another, like, you know, it's like a <laughs> oh, post-pandemic problem. Try and get these gremlins out of the Zoom system. You be like in electronics. Now it's the main way to Zoom. <laughs> I know. So anyway, just to finish that thought, 
What you, it's so interesting these days. What you do is you take your stems, they call them, those are your tracks, and you send them to the, the studio musician that they are working through. Uh, and then they do their tracks and then they send it back to you. And they did help mix the album too, which was really nice. Um, and so it, it's just a great thing that we can do now to share you know to co collaborate with other musicians is that you can send them your work and they can contribute to it and send it back to you basically with their mm -hmm. parts on it so those those musicians a couple of those musicians that played on lights lights of the bay were just super good you know and you can tell I and mean, the keyboard player was he i heard he was a uh, motown uh, studio player and so was the girl singer was just fantastic and uh, so you put all that together um and the the stuff i was able to contribute there as far as you know the, all the other tracks and then i have an old good old friend bass player uh that i was working with back in my original groups and he's still we're still working together and so he did the bass parts and we we were able to put together just a really a track that everybody really likes you know and uh, it's it and it is kind of like a oh swing jazz jazzy kind of feel to it and mm -hmm. and and then the story itself too it's very like lights of the bay it has lots of the video is really is really fun you could check mm -hmm. it out on youtube uh, if they want i've certainly checked that out as well too it made me think of uh moonlighting it was like back in the it was yeah. the late 80s or something and just yeah. really had that jazzy pleasant feel and everything and i thought that's like going back to days of uh moonlighting and that's like you know that's when i wrote it that's interesting yeah. Oh my gosh, that is something I'll tell you. <laughs> well, That's, yeah, still one of my favorites. Maddie, where are you, Bruce? You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that sort of thing too. And also, you also had Winds of Fortune too. You had the title track, uh, "Be a Survivor," "Out of Orbit," and more too. And um, you know, tell us about your latest project and that one. What inspired you to write that? And if you want to talk about the songs, that's fine too. Yeah. Well, the Winds of Fortune is just. I think it's it's. I've always written some songs that are that are um, uh, Latin uh, kind of uh, pop music that is very almost traditional there i always go for the traditional stuff um kind of kind of a format to the song so and the winds of fortune is about what it sounds like it's about how we are kind of all sort of beholding to and sort of blown away blown around by the winds of fortune in our lives and how no matter what we do they can kind of trick us into having a different outcome than what we thought was ha going to happen. And here is a guy that's just, you know, he's singing about, you know, the winds of fortune blow through my, blow through my life. They come to me like a thief in the night. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, and, you know, the winds of fortune, please don't blow me away. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so there, there was that, and it, and it was an exploration of that theme um and then some of the other songs that are on there i mean everyone has its has its own story uh but um you know there's there's one on there called home uh, that was the one i wrote back actually back in the 80s but it was about how you know no matter where you go in life but the all all roads lead somewhere the roads that we've seen some go in circles and some in between but my favorite place that i ever have known is the one that leads me home <laughs> mm -hmm. right and it's about you know having that place that sanctuary place in your life where you can go back to and um then there was um you know let's see some of the other ones on there were were um um i don't have them in front of me right now so i'm not not thinking of them so easily but uh, they there was um uh, Let's see another. Oh, another one. Monkey, monkey sitting on the fence. That I was, was just going to mention that one. Monkey on a fence. That sounds yeah. like a fun one. <laughs> that was fun, and we did it like a storybook. The video, so it opens up, and here's all these scenes of all these monkeys jumping around and playing around. And the idea there, and that was just a really popular one in my original groups. Uh, everybody loved it, and the idea there was, you know, monkeys have no sense, but they kind of know what they're doing, know more than we know, because they don't sweat everything so much, and in the end, it says, the monkey does, you know, monkey 
sitting on the fence. Mikey ain't got no sense sitting in the sun all day and all he wants to do is play. And uh, it's, it's in there, you know, it, I, there I was able to use all these exotic, uh, you know, ryth rhythmic instruments like a kalimba and there's it, some really neat instruments on there so you can make give it that authentic sound and we were able to put together this story that was just really really a charming story almost like a children's book is what the video is format is like okay and, and uh, apparently uh, Car Carla played it for her her uh, uh, a grandson and he just loved it and I nice <laughs> so I said, see, there's our market. <laughs> there you go. You just go right to your manager and do so. And of course, they tell two of their friends and so on and so on. I think that's the best place to start, too. So, yeah. <laughs> and, and of course, uh, we also got Out of Orbit. And um, well, Out of Orbit, that came out, the video came out really neat on that one. And I'm wearing a space suit. And it's basically, it's like, you know, uh, that's a, about a love affair that went, that went sideways or literally. You knocked me out of orbit, and I'm now I'm falling toward the sky, and it's like, you know, uh, of all the of all the uh, the stars up in the sky, none shine so bright as you and I. Of all the celestial bodies I've seen, yours always seem to you know shine supreme. It, he starts talking about this great feelings he has for this woman, but you knocked me out of orbit. Now I don't know why. Um, and my polarity is reversed and I'm falling toward the sky. If it wasn't so damn funny, I think I'd have to cry. But, you know, <laughs> so much, because you've knocked me out of orbit so I'm falling toward the sky. So it is, it's like a really fun kind of song, but in a way it's just taking something that's really sad and turning it into something that's kind of, entertaining almost you know kind of thing too almost almost it sounds like today's love relationships these days especially on social yeah. media instagram facebook twitter and everything else oh yeah 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 exactly and that's it's kind of like going over that whole whole process again and saying oh well here goes another another crazy one you know kind of <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and of course you know holidays are coming up we got holiday love as well too and uh just a bit about that oh one. yeah holiday love is a true story where I, I was on a vacation and i met this girl and um and uh she well she had a couple of kids that did, <laughs> and uh, she was in another country and it would have been very hard to bring her here and i kind of had to eventually give up on that one i thought but I mean, it was a true story, truly inspired by this romantic tryst in on, in a very exotic, um, uh, uh, yeah, kind of in the in the jungle kind of place in the in the tropical. This was the word I'm looking for, kind of place, which I love those kind of places, and met this person, and it was just a, you know, um, a, a really a nostalgic uh, re retelling of the story in music mm -hmm. and and it was very there was a lot of feeling that went into it and there again the production of it and everything came out really nice uh the way we can do do things in the studios now uh with this stuff uh so that was an, another one that came out of that uh which we any other songs on there that used to you I, I i think we covered most of it but we'll talk about your third album that'll be up next year you listen to the mike yeah. Wagner show at the mike Wagner show.com powered by sonic web studios Visit our line at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. And brought to you by official sponsor, the Mike Wagner Show, International War Ring author, Mia Molson's The Missing, available on Amazon and paperback, paperback and ebook. We'll be back with multi talented singer, songwriter, performer from the Bay Area, David Harley, after this timeout. We're back with the uh, traditional singer, songwriter, performer from the Bay Area, David Harley, here on the Mike Wagner Show. And uh, we cover the River of Life, the Winds of Fortune, and a lot of green things are happening for David. And uh, you got a third album that's going to be coming out and uh, talk about that one a bit. Okay. Well, we, I, I haven't decided on a title uh, yet for it, but it's I'm getting the, getting the songs worked up. And um, I'm kind of focusing a bit more on getting songs that are going to work work well in a live performance set, uh, setting, which is a little, maybe a little more up-tempo, a little more edge to them. Um, and the, the songs um, are coming out really, really good. It's, it's a great, great group of songs. Um, 
that there again, I'm drawing upon the things that I had written years ago. And whenever I pull them up, I, I uh, rewrite them. I re rearrange them and then record them and, and have an adventure of finally getting these songs to sound the way I kind of heard them in my head in the first place. And there's one I was working on today called Taking the Time. And it's a, it's a jazzy song. It's actually in swing timing. And um, it's just starting to come out really cool. Um, there was um, some of the other ones where like Baby Don't Go is a real down and dirty blues song. It's, it came out really cool. Uh, that also is the, I Can't Go Home um, was sort of R&B kind of um, traditional Bill Withers kind of feel to it almost. Uh, kind of song about some guy who, who was a, an innocent man but he paid the price for a crime he didn't commit. And then, and, but I, now I can't go home no more. And that's the chorus to it. And um, it's just, a, you know, got a real nice jazz feeling to it. There's one called The Lonely Miles, which is a, got a horn section and a ripping guitar on it. And that's another kind of uh, hard, hard rocking blues, blues kind of song. And um one of the songs we're on the last album, though, that we're going to be bringing out and doing a video of is um, uh, Be a Survivor, it's called. And so that some of these, and that's a song that's like a traditional blues song uh, in a lot of ways, but it's got a, you know its own unique twist to it and some really good guitar playing on it and stuff, too. So we're kind of working more toward getting stuff worked up that's going to be better for live performances, too. Um, but I always take the time to take in, to do songs like taking the time <laughs> where, mm -hmm. where where it's more melodic, more more laid back and acoustic feeling to it too. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need to do these days is take your time, not rush, rush, rush. I think you make a great point on that one. Yeah, yeah. So it's it, you know, it's coming along. Um and um I don't have the the songs in front of me. I should have had my songs so I could remember, uh, but but it's you know, it's we're, everything that we're doing. Um, oh, I know. I did one with uh, a girl singer. I did send out, send it out, and she's a gospel singer, and it's a gospel song, and it's called "All Is Forgiven," and and it's a song. This is one I've written just recently about some, and it was a really I I couldn't go into it, wouldn't have time, in but it was about a, a, a relationship where you meet somebody uh, online, actually. Mm -hmm. And you know how one thing you're thinking you're meeting this person that's look one one way, and it turns out there's somebody else entirely or something like that. Or and, like imposters, yeah. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> here we go. Imposter <laughs> syndrome. That's been the big thing these days. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, but but it was funny. But my reaction to it was though that it's all forgiven, because you know if you hold in your your anger and your hurt and all that um for another person or something that's gone wrong within a relationship it just does nothing get nothing positive for you uh, the sooner you can and it's understandable that people have to grieve things and kind of think about what went wrong but at the same time you have to come to a point where you let it go and that was what it was about. It was just like, it's all forgiven in, in my life. Uh, the sun's going to shine and, you know, and the, the creek's going to rise and, and, and it's all going to be all right, you know, kind of thing. And that's certainly true as well, too. And where can we find uh, Winds of Fortune, River of Life and all your works at? Okay, so you can find them. The best place that I would direct people to is my website because it's really nice that you can hear the whole songs and see the lyrics for free. Basically, I'm giving <laughs> giving it away for free because if people then want to buy the album, they can buy it on on uh, Amazon. And my um, and, and you can of course get it on Spotify and Apple Music. You can stream stuff that way. Uh, but if you want to buy the actual album, you can too uh, on Amazon. And but my my website is davidharleymusic.com. DavidHarleyMusic.com. So, yeah, yeah. 
And if you go on there, you'll hear, you'll see all this, my story, my history. You'll see the last two albums I did. You'll be able to hear all the songs, take your time and see my happenings, updates of what's been happening in my career. And also even send me an email and say hi, would be lovely. <laughs> All right, we will certainly do so. Once again, we're with a uh, multi-talented singer, songwriter, performer from the Bay Area, David Harley here on the Mike Wagner Show. J David, just a few more things here. Uh, who do you consider your biggest influence in your career? Ah, uh, that's a good question. I would, I would really have to say, the Beatles, because they just they did the same thing that I feel I do which is to take all these different influences and synthesize them and create something new. And always with this kind of great musicality to it and, and harmony and melody uh, and thoughtfulness. The lyrics were very intelligent, kind of, you know, you could learn from them from somehow. You mm -hmm. know, and, certainly, and certainly do as well. And what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? To anybody? Anybody, yes, in general. Okay, the best advice I give to anybody would be to just hang in there uh, because life is full of good things that happen when you do. And sometimes it seems like things aren't working out, and but that passes. As long as you just have the commitment and the desire, the passion, to have things work for you and what you can bring to the party, so to speak, mm -hmm. uh, you, you'll, you'll find a way. And and it uh, it takes time though, it takes patience sometimes. Uh, but I think it's great for everybody to just, to keep going with what they're doing. And if, you, if something needs to be changed, go ahead and try to make a change. And, but but keep keep it up, so to speak. We certainly do so, and that's great advice, David. Once again, we're with David Harley of uh, Winds of Fortune, River of Life, here on the Mike Wagner Show, featuring the song uh, Lights of the Bay. David, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely fantastic. L learned a lot from me. Looking forward to having you soon. Keep us up to date. Keep in touch. Love to have you back. And once again, um, what's the website? How do people contact you? Where can people purchase or check out your music? DavidHarleyMusic.com. So it's just H A R L E Y, David Harley Music.com. Love to have you come and visit my site and say hello. We will certainly do so. Once again, David, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely fantastic. Looking forward to having soon. Keep us up to date. Keep in touch. Love to have you back and wish you all the best. And David, you definitely have a great future ahead of you. Thank you. Good night. <laughs>